You know, far be it from me to be controversial, but I have to ask this question. How can we say that we are believers and believe what the Bible says and not stand for pro-life? How can we say that we are pro-life and not stand against this new abortion pill? We've got a lot to say about that. If you've been tuning in and watching the news at all, you see the Supreme Court standing that's been happening against this new abortion pill that's going to be in CVS, Walgreens. And you know what's more important? Our guest today has something to say about that as well. You might have heard of her. She had a movie called Unplanned. She's one of the greatest pro-life voices to ever beat pavement here in the earth. She's got a new movie coming out called Unthinkable. You're going to want to stay tuned. It's about to get real deep in pro-life in this special edition of Hope Today. Life in a post-roll world starts now. Welcome to this special edition of Hope Today, life in a post-roll world, empowering you to get off of the front row and to get on to the front line. I'm Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert, alongside with my lovely, beautiful yes. wife, Pastor Tiff. It's good to be with you. It's good to be here today. I love yes. being on here with you and using our voice for pro-life. Amen. And we are so excited and we're glad that you tuned in. Listen, lock and load because things are about to get deep. And I tell you what, you're not going to want to miss our guest today. Who do we have coming up? Oh, my goodness. I've been, we've been waiting for her. Yes, She's an yes. awesome woman of God. She has been used by the Lord in a mighty way. She's an awesome voice for the pro-life movement. And I love the fact, Pastor Jay, that she has um, really experienced the transformative power of God. Yeah, she has. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Abby Johnson is in the house. My God, God has given us favor to have her on. And I believe she's got a message about pro-life that is going to really bless your socks off. You've been watching the news. You see what's happening in the Supreme Court. And they got this abortion pill yeah, that is going to yeah. be on the stores of CVS, Walgreens. We're going to get into that. But we've had some experiences with it already. Yeah. And you know what? First of all, it's a nasty pill. It's a nasty pill. Some people would like to make you think that it's, it's common. It's just a thing that, you know, if you have an unplanned pregnancy, this is just what you do. But it is nasty, Pastor Jay. In fact, we had a, a young woman come in our center and uh, she actually um, chose life, but then she was pressured by her significant other to go ahead and take the pill. But this is the thing. She went, she didn't know where to go. She went in somewhere online mm -hmm. um, and searched for the pill. And it was somewhere in Florida that she got it. Well, she called us back and she said, listen, I really, I mean, she was like, just, uh, just crazy. I mean, just, just crying and upset. And she was like, listen, I need help. Can you yeah. help me? And we said, well, where did you get, you know, can you call back? Where'd you get this pill? And she said, I don't even know where I got it from. Wow. And she said, listen, I don't know if it's, if it did what it was supposed to do. Well, she came back in our center. We talked with her, uh, you know, we prayed with her. We gave her some sound direction. And I said, listen, you need to go to the hospital. You need to go straight there. So we made sure that she got to the hospital. Pastor Jane, when she got to the hospital, that baby had been dead wow. in her stomach for almost 15 days, almost 15 days dead in her stomach. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness. I mean, imagine if she didn't call, imagine if she didn't come in, that could have been her life. This is the type of pill yeah. that we need to stand up That's against. Right. We need to be a voice. We can't just sit here. I always say we can't just sit. We have to really do something right. and use the God-given voice, the God-given influence that he's given to us, not just to sit on, not just to, to, just to pray. And listen, prayer is great, but we need to use our voice, Pastor Jay. That's right. That's right. So that's the reason why we We've asked you to join with us in this movement. You're going to find out more in just a little bit on how you can be a part of this movement. This is the whole purpose of Voices for the Unborn. 
our pregnancy center. For those of you that have tuned in, maybe you're seeing us for the first time. Thank you so much, Cornerstone Television, for giving us this opportunity to get people off of the front rows onto the front lines to educate, empower, and to energize you to get involved in this pro-life battle in Jesus' name. I'm so excited because we've got a great guest. She is awesome. And Abby Johnson, founder and director of And Then There Were None in Pro-Life Ministries. Abby Johnson worked for Planned Parenthood for eight years, working her way up through the ranks to become the clinic director in Bryan, Texas. She was Planned Parenthood's employee, employee of the year in 2008, but she walked away from her job after witnessing the abortion of a 13 week old fetus during an ultrasound guided abortion. She left Planned Parenthood and instantly became a national news headline for her defection, which led to a pro-life speaking career. In 2012, she founded And Then There Were None, the only ministry in the nation that helps abortion workers leave their jobs and find new ones out of the industry. To date, she has helped over 600, get that, 680 abortion wow. workers quit. Wow. She also founded Pro-Life Ministries and Love Line in the fall of 2019. Her best-selling book, which I have right here, Unplanned, was made into a feature film that debuted in theaters nationwide March 2019 under the same name, and she is the host of the podcast Politely Rude. She is also the author of Fierce Mercy, released in March 2022, and co-editor of Life to the Full, released in April 2023. She and her husband, Doug, have eight children. Wow. Welcome to the program, Abby. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, so we're so excited. And, and let me ask you, let's, let's start with this. The U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments yesterday on the abortion pill. You have had an abortion pill abortion. What do women need to know who are considering this? Well, you know, when I worked at the clinic, we really sold the abortion pill procedure as something that was natural, something that was less invasive, um, comparable to the surgical abortion procedure. Um, you know, something that was like having your monthly cycle, mm -hmm. but it's none of those things. Uh, the medication abortion procedure is significantly more risky um, and, and people always wonder like, how can that be? It's just a pill. And the surgical procedure is actually putting instruments inside of somebody's body. So, you know, how can a, a, just taking a pill be more dangerous, but it's actually four times riskier than a surgical abortion. And this is why, because when women have a medication abortion, many, many times, the pills are not strong enough to actually evacuate all of the contents of the woman's uterus. Mm. And so parts of the baby will be left inside of the woman's uterus. And if any parts of the baby are left in her uterus and she does not know about it, which most of the time the women don't know about it, um, then she can become septic. She'll develop an infection. That infection will become septic and sepsis is fatal. And so when we look at, you know, the majority of deaths from abortion over the past 10 to 20 years, almost all of them are from medication abortion and almost all of those medication abortion deaths are from infection, from septic infection. And that's because they died because parts of their baby were left in their uterus, were left in their womb. And that's what caused their death. The medication abortion procedure is incredibly bloody. Like you said, it is a nasty, disgusting, it is an unrelenting sort of pain. It can go on for, I mean, up to eight weeks. Women pass clots the size of lemons for sometimes eight weeks. Women have labor-like pains. 
This is not anything that is natural. It is never natural to take pills that kill your child. Um, it is devastating. It is a devastating procedure. And not only does it take the life of your child every time, each and every time, but it can also take your life. Wow. Well, you know, I think also that's important to mention that a lot of women aren't getting this full story. So where can they go, Abby, to be able to find out more information about this? Because obviously, you know, this is going to be in CVS, Walgreens. They're putting this on every store shelf. Don't need a prescription. Just go in there and grab it. I mean, the ramifications of this. Let me ask you this question. I know this isn't on there, but let me ask this question, Abby. Is it possible for these women to take this thing? And what if they're 30 weeks in? What if they're way beyond the uh, mm -hmm. chemical, uh, uh, the, the lines of where, whether it's 10 weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it is, what would happen to them if they take it further down the line? Yes, that's really a great and interesting question. Um, the last year that I went to a National Abortion Federation conference, that was in 2019, I mean, uh, 2009, sorry, it was in 2009, um, there was a, an abortion doctor from Canada who had been studying the effects of medication abortion in late-term pregnancies for late-term abortions. And he had been doing medication abortions on women that were around 24 to 26 weeks in their pregnancy. These were women who were delivering babies in their homes. And so what he was doing was he was giving them a red plastic biohazard bag. He was giving them scissors to cut the umbilical cord. He was giving them pads so that they could protect their bed or the floor or wherever because delivery of a child is messy. Um, he was giving them all these different pads to clean themselves up with, all this stuff. Um, and he was giving them instruction on how to deal with the child after it was born because these babies were born alive. And so the instructions were to simply put the living baby in the bag to tie up the bag and just to allow the baby to suffocate to death. Oh my goodness. And that's exactly what would happen, Pastor Jay. Wow. If a woman delivers a baby um, at late term in her pregnancy with medication abortion pills, which absolutely can happen, that baby's lungs are not strong enough to breathe on their own without medical intervention. And so that baby cannot breathe on its own. And so that baby's own lungs will essentially, after time, collapse in on themselves, causing the baby to suffocate. Wow. You know, that's devastating to hear that. And uh, this is gonna be available, ladies and gentlemen, at your CVS and Walgreens. Thank you again, Cornerstone, for giving us the opportunity to come out and share this. You know, Abby, if people want to get more information on this chemical pill, it's, I think it's called Mifeprestone, that's coming mm -hmm. out, that's going to be everywhere, where can they go to get more information so then they're aware of what they're putting into their bodies? Yeah, so um, our ministry, and then there were none, actually just started recently a campaign called Little Pills That Kill, and that's the website, littlepillsthatkill.com, and it is a website full of information about the medication abortion pills, and it is testimonies from people, former abortion workers. So these are people who used to distribute the pill. These are people who used to talk to women about taking these pills. It is their own testimonies, their own experiences, and even some people who have taken these pills, and they are sharing the truth about what really happens with these medication abortion pills. What you're going to be told 
when you walk into an abortion clinic, but what the actual reality is. And so it's a it's a great website. People can go there, listen to testimonies, uh, listen to the reality behind medication abortion. But people need to realize that right now, these pills are so available. There are over 70 websites right now where anyone, me, you, a 13-year-old, a 16-year-old, anyone could go online. You can put in any name. You can put in any date of birth. They do not check for identification. They do not check for age. They do not check to make sure that your pregnancy is in your uterus and not outside of your uterus, like an ectopic pregnancy, which can be fatal if you take these pills. They do not check to your medical history to make sure that you don't have a blood clotting disorder or something like that, which could also be fatal if you take these pills. They do no checking, okay? They don't verify to make sure that you are as far along as you say you are in your pregnancy. You never speak to a doctor. You never speak to a nurse. You never speak to any medical professional. All you do is you submit information without any sort of identification. You submit information. A girl on the other end will email you a link to make payment, and the payment is anywhere between $100 and $150. You make payment, and they will ship these pills to you anywhere in the United States, in any state, even in states where abortion is technically illegal, they will ship these pills to you uh, to any address, any dorm, any house, any business, anywhere. And you can take these pills on your own time for as little as $100. That is happening today, right now. Yeah, you're so right, Abby, because as I shared before, the woman that came in, you know, I asked her, where'd you get it from? And she said, Florida. And I mean, I was blown away that she got it all the way in Florida. And I'm so glad you shared what you shared. I'm so glad we're talking about yeah. this because I think people need to be educated. People in the church, people outside of the church need to know exactly what is going on, what are the repercussions, that this isn't just something that you just take in the privacy of your home, like it's quiet, it's quick, it's just, and that's it, you move on with your life. No, you don't move on with your life. There's so many other other things on the flip side of that that you have to go through. Now, you've been working on a special movie project um, that involves former, or former abortion workers. Could you give us some behind the scenes info on that film? Sure, so I've been working on a documentary um, called Unthinkable. So when I left the abortion industry, there were you know, a lot of liberal pundits, reporters that kind of said, well, and even just pro-abortion supporters that said, okay, you know, this is your story. This was at your facility, but that doesn't happen anywhere else, right? Um, it's just your story alone. And the abortion industry, it, you know, by and large is a great thing. And, you know, it, your clinic was just a one-off. And so, but we've had 680 workers, wow. more than 680 workers come through our ministry and find a saving relationship with Christ. And so I thought, okay, we have heard the same stories over and over and over again. I know better than that. I know that my story is not isolated, but let's put this out to the public. And so that's what I did. I went around, we gathered a bunch, we gathered dozens and dozens of former abortion workers together. And I also flew around and interviewed former abortion workers just to find out that question. Are these issues systemic? Is this a pervasive problem in the abortion industry or was it just a one-off? You know, was my clinic just kind of a singular problem? And what I found, honestly, there were some stories that were even shocking for me. 
Um, and there's not too many things about the abortion industry that shock me, but there were a couple of stories I heard from clients that even to this day, I'm, I'm still a little shaken by, and we're talking about babies being born alive, drowned in toilets, um, the backs of their necks slit with household scissors in order to kill them. Um, things that I think anybody, anybody with a conscience, pro-life or pro-abortion would look at that and say, this is not okay. This is wrong. And these things need to be exposed. Um, and not even things that extreme, but just the filthiness of these facilities, you know, television and movies have made it seem like abortion is bloodless, painless, and sterile. And I can tell you all three of those things, it's not true. Abortion is one of the bloodiest procedures a woman can go through. Number one, the uterus is the most vascular organ in the female body, and it's murdering a, a, a child, and murder is bloody. Number two, it is not painless. Having an abortion is extremely painful. It's just an extremely painful, not just physically, but also emotionally, because having an abortion is the most unnatural thing a woman can ever do to her child. So it is emotionally and physically painful, but it is not sterile. These surgical abortions are taking place in some of the most filthy, I don't know, not, I, I don't even want to call them clinics, some of the most filthy facilities you have ever heard of in your life. These inspection reports that we've been able to pull from state departments, literally, in one of them, it literally said there was a rat hole, a rat hole right next to the bed where they performed abortions. And they could see fresh rat droppings right next to the surgical abortion procedure bed. Friends, they did not shut that clinic down. They allowed that clinic to continue to perform abortions, even though they saw a rat hole right next to where they are putting instruments inside of a woman's body. These facilities are disgusting. They do not have the same health standards, the same health codes that your local nail salon has. Your nail salons, your tanning parlors, your tattoo and piercing studios are inspected more and they have more guidelines and more regulations than your local abortion facility. That should enrage every citizen in this country. Wow, my goodness. So basically this uh, movie, it sounds like more like a documentary is going to be um, coming out when? So it'll be coming out in the next few months. We don't have a hard date for it, but we, we, we are going to release it before the election yeah. because we think that having this information out there about abortion, we know abortion is on the ballot in 2024. And so we want people to have as much truthful information about abortion before they go to those voting places. Wow. Well, Abby, we want to thank you so much for your time. We salute you. It is such an honor to have you. Thank you for your stance for pro-life. I know you suffer a lot of venom, 
uh, for your stance, but know that God's hand is upon your life mightily. And I know that you know that, that we are praying for you. Ladies and gentlemen, you all need to thank the Lord for such a phenomenal voice, a woman that's willing to stand on the front lines. Thank you so much, Abby Johnson, for your time. Thank you so much for your words and for the instruction you've given us. And may God continue to bless you in all that you do. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, if that doesn't move your heart, yeah. to, that we need to do something, mm -hmm. nothing will. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got to be a voice in this season. The, I, I thought about that. That means you can be a 13-year-old girl, mm -hmm. gets pregnant, mm -hmm. your parents would never know. Mm -hmm. You can go into CVS and Walgreens. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go in there, your daughter, granddaughter can go take a pill and bleed out and lose the baby, kill the baby, murder the baby, and nobody would ever know. And not only that, wow. Pastor Jay, you know, we don't even know, that girl may not even know how far along she is. She'll know. Yeah. She could be, I mean, it wasn't right. uncommon for, for ladies to walk into our center and think they're nine weeks pregnant, but they're really 20 or they're really 15. You know, so I think it's really important to, to make sure that we're hearing this. That's right. We're hearing this message. And doing something about it. And doing something about it. That's right. It's not just, you're right, Pastor Jay, it's not just hearing it, but it's actually doing something about it. You know what I thought when she was talking that there was like, or what I felt rather, there was a, just like a righteous anger yeah. that came up in me. Like we can't, we have to do something. We have to speak. Those that are unborn, those lives are depending on us to speak up, Pastor Jay. And that's why we've got the 100 plus movement coming yes. April 20th. Tell them about it for a yes. moment. Yes, 100 plus campaign, everybody. You don't want to miss it. April 20th, which is a Saturday at 8.30 a.m. God laid it upon our hearts to get the body of Christ together, to come together and make sure that we have 100 plus people on the sidewalk down by our center because we know, as many of you know, that we have one of the largest abortion providers in the city of Pittsburgh right around the corner from us. So we know that we have kingdom influence. We have influence, everybody, right. but we don't have the influence if we don't use it, if we don't activate it. So I'm asking everybody to join us. After you've heard this, I hope that you would say, listen, Pastor Jay, Pastor Jeff, we will be there with you April 20th at 8.30 a.m. And you know what, even if you're like, hey, I don't know, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to say, it doesn't matter. I tell people, as long as you are praying to God the Father, he's the one that will cause that impact to be made as we come together as a collective body of Christ and see God move on Amen. that sidewalk. Amen. Abortion is one of the things that we can all stand together, regardless of our denomination, regardless if you believe in speaking in tongues, whether you pray, pray your Hail Mary and Our Father, whether you're Baptist, it doesn't matter where you are, we can all come together. April 20th, this is your opportunity to get off of the front row and onto the front line. 8.30, meet us down at our center, 114 North Highland, right in the East Liberty. We are one block away from one of the largest abortion providers in all of Pennsylvania. We are here and we're on the front lines and we hope that you'll join with us. That's the reason why we're bringing this to you is to educate you that we as the body of Christ, the only way for evil to triumph, for abortion to triumph, is for good men and women to do nothing. I'm persuaded better things of us. It's our time to stand up and to be a voice for the voiceless. Join us.